One principle that I've always applied when I was coaching the Olympic lifts, especially with CrossFit athletes or with athletes with plyometric training, with heavy training, uh, is the schmidt bleicher principle. Basically, the last thing you do has the greatest, most profound impact on motor learning or CNS adaptation. In, in simpler words, if you finish an exercise with a slow reps, a slow rep or a rep where technique sucked, even if you made the lift, that will have a negative impact on your motor learning because the last thing you did for that motor, that motor pattern will have the most long lasting impact on motor learning. So if your last snatch, your last power snatch, you didn't finish your extension, the bar was forward, that is what the brain will remember and the next time you do a snatch, that is the starting point you will be at. And, and if you have a slight degradation like that from week to week, at one point, okay, let me ask you if that ever happened to you. You are bench pressing or squatting, everything is going great. From week to week, you're progressing. Then all of a sudden, for no reason, the lift starts to feel a bit funny, like you're not comfortable. You, the bar pad seems off, but you, can, you cannot pinpoint it because in, my, in your mind, you're doing the same thing over and over again. And then your performance starts to drop. You don't know why. I mean, your strength is, your muscle mass is up. On the assistance lifts, you're getting stronger, but your technique, it just feels somewhat off. And then your performance drops and drops and drops. Pretty common thing to happen. What happens is that <coughs> when you always finish on a sub-optimum rep, which is normally what happens when you're doing strength work, because that last rep, you're grinding more, you're more fatigued, stuff like that. So it's normal to finish on a negative note. But if you do that on a weekly basis, you're always having a slight technical degradation. You might have an improvement, then it goes back down. So at one point, your technique degrades enough that it starts to feel off, out of position, it feels weird, but you can't explain why, and then performance drops. That's what's happening. You have a slight motor learning, negative motor learning, because you always finish on a negative thing. So when you are training for performance, like bodybuilding is not as affected by that, but when you're training for performance, you always want to finish with the best rep. So if you have your last snatch slightly forward, while you want to decrease the weight, get a perfect rep in. And you know what? I can almost guarantee, and let's just say that you did power snatch 225 slightly forward, you lower it back down to 205, I can guarantee that the bar will once again be forward. It's funny because I was, I was training a CrossFit girl, she was a pretty good Olympic weightlifter, her best snatch was 190 pounds, uh, maybe even more than that, anyway, let's say 190. And then she missed like 195, like five times in front. And I, I told her, okay, decrease to 165. Very easy weight for her. And then I, 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 I took out a $20 bill from my pocket. I, I bet you $20 that you missed that one forward. And Chris, I haven't missed 165 in like three years. No, I, I bet you we were going to miss it. And she missed it forward. Because the, those five reps that were pulled forward reprogram her brain, and even with the lighter weight, she did that pattern. We had to do two more sets to get that one perfect rep in. And that's how you should finish. The more complex the movement, the more important it is to finish on a positive note. That's also why when I'm training athletes, I like to always use a down set. So let's say I squat, my last squat is 200 kilos, well, even though it was quality reps, I will decrease it down to 180 and get two really fast reps in. Very high quality, high speed, because I want my brain to remember the faster rate of force development. Here's a, a, a study I conducted when I was doing my master's degree. Uh, I was studying the uh, like power training. So uh, we had a setup where we had the, the, the subject do a vertical jump. And we calculated both the amount of force produced on the floor and the height of the jump by, uh, by vertical displacement. So it was very accurate. And then we had them do five jumps with 20% of their body weight. Then they rested, they rested long enough to recover. And then they retested their vertical jump. After which I asked them, did you jump higher before or after the set with the vest? They all said, I jumped higher after the vest. They all jumped lower after the vest. Because the feeling was that they felt that they jumped higher versus the vest, which was the case. And they felt faster. But 
they actually learn to produce force at a slower rate because of the higher weight. So when they had to retest for that short duration, it negatively impacted performance. So the same thing can happen with lifting. So that's why when I work with athletes with whom speed is important, I always like to finish on a very, very fast set. It can even be just something as finishing with a few jumps. Always finish with speed when working with athletes or very technically efficient rep when working with athletes.